Xeon is better with NVIDIA. Xeon is better for NVIDIA ray tracing and DLSS. If you enable ray tracing and DLSS, you will see no difference between Xeon E5 and Ryzen 5. AMD is shit. Xeon plus NVIDIA forever. These are the comments that I am getting to my channel and my private messengers all the time. So in this video, let's try to figure out if there is any truth to base those claims. Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. A few days ago, my favorite YouTuber, Steve from Hardware Unboxed, has released a very interesting and informative video comparing performance between Intel and AMD CPUs, as well as AMD and NVIDIA GPUs in different circumstances. Let's listen what he says. Did you know that your CPU limited gaming performance could be anywhere from 20 to 30% better with a Radeon GPU? Sounds crazy, I know, but it is true, and I'm going to prove it. Steve has made an excellent video and he has gathered lots of interesting and useful information. Thus, I strongly recommend you to go by the link in the video description and watch the video. You will not regret it. Still, there is a thing that Steve didn't do. He did not test Xeon E5 CPUs, right? So, in this video, I am going to tell you how Xeon E5 2698v3 compares to Ryzen 5 5600X using two different graphics cards. The first one will be AMD RX 6800 XT, and the second one will be NVIDIA RDX 3080. In this video, I'm going to test my 18 standard games, but the focus will be to figure out if there is any difference between AMD and NVIDIA GPU when using Intel Xeon E5 and Ryzen 5 CPUs. I have already compared Xeon E5 and Ryzen 5 with and without hyper-threading in 1080p, 1440p, 4K, and working benchmarks, Thus, if you're interested, follow the link here or there, and you will see it. In this video, I'm going to focus on difference between the difference. So we will see how much slower Xeon E5 is compared to Ryzen 5 when we install AMD graphics card and when we install Nvidia graphics card. If you're interested to see how these two graphics cards compare to each other, there is plenty of different comparisons online. What I can say for sure is that they both have about the same level of performance, so this will be a very interesting and very valid video. Xeon E5 2698v3 will be tested with a Turbo Boost Unlock and undervolting 400mV for CPU core and 60mV for integrated memory controller or CPU cache. I have also disabled hyper-threading, as it in general provides slightly better gaming performance. Additionally to this, I will also validate how the system behaves if I enable RDX and DLSS in the games which support it. Some people claim that since RDX and DLSS is so heavy on the GPU, then you don't really need a powerful CPU because the GPU is the bottleneck. So, let's try to figure that out. Let's start with Battlefield 5 as usual. Here, testing with RX 6800 XT, Xeon E5 2698v3 loses 31 and 13% to Ryzen 5 5600X, when measuring 1% low and average FPS. Switching to RTX 3080, the gap between the CPUs shrinks to 9 and 14%. It's a rather significant change, and in this particular game, combination of Xeon E5 plus Nvidia is better than combination of Xeon E5 plus AMD graphics card. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Here, AMD RX 6800 XT is overall better than NVIDIA RDX 3080. Comparing the CPUs, we see that Xeon E5 loses 7% with 1% low values and beats Ryzen 5 by 3% when it comes to averages. Switching to NVIDIA RDX 3080, we see a completely different picture. Here, Xeon E5 loses to Ryzen 5 42% when comparing 1% lows, which is very similar to Battlefield 5, but this time it's flipped. This time it's Xeon E5 plus NVIDIA RDX 3080 who are providing the worst 1% low performance. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is another odd game. Here, RDX 3080 is better than AMD RX 6800 XT. Comparing the CPUs, with RDX 3080, Xeon E5 loses only 2 and 5%. But with AMD RX 6800 XT, Xeon loses to Ryzen 27 and 26%. Thus, we can see that in case of Assassin's Creed, DirectX 11 game is better optimized for NVIDIA graphics card, and DirectX 12 game is better optimized for AMD graphics cards. The next game is F1 2019. It's an interesting case, because with the Ryzen 5 5600X, NVIDIA RDX 3080 is better than AMD RX 6800 XT. But with the Xeon E5 2698v3, 
AMD RX 6800 XT is slightly better than NVIDIA RDX 3080. A rather weird result, but with AMD GPU Xeon loses 28 and 25 percent, with NVIDIA GPU Xeon loses 36 percent. Another racing game is Dirt Rally 2. Here, with AMD RX 6800 XT, Xeon loses to Ryzen 36 and 25 percent. Switching to NVIDIA RDX 3080, the difference is only 18 and 7 percent. It's important to mention that overall performance is much better with AMD RX 6800 XT. Combination of Xeon E5 2698v3 and AMD RX 6800 XT is providing basically the same performance as Ryzen 5 5600X and NVIDIA RDX 3080. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War One more game where Xeon E5 loses 30-32% with AMD RX 6800 XT but the gap shrinks to 13 and 15 percent with NVIDIA RDX 3080. Black Ops Cold War is a rather new game and it uses DirectX 12 API. Thus, we can see that it's not related to DirectX 12 or DirectX 11. Some games are better optimized to use AMD plus AMD, other games are better optimized to use NVIDIA plus Intel. The last game I'm going to take a look at is Metro Exodus. Here, with AMD RX 6800 XT, both of the CPUs are providing basically identical performance. The difference is just 3 and 8 percent. Switching to NVIDIA RDX 3080, the gap between the CPUs grows to 11 and 19 percent. This is a significant difference, and yet again we see that the game uses DirectX 12 API, but performs differently with different combinations. For the averages, I'm going to combine only 16 games, because Mafia 2 Definitive Edition and DSC World are providing much better results with AMD Ryzen 5 plus AMD RX 6800 XT compared to other results. Thus, it's not really fair to calculate the gap between Xeon and Ryzen in these games, since NVIDIA RDX 3080 is not able to provide the same level of performance even with the Ryzen CPU. So, on average, using AMD RX 6800 XT, Xeon E5 2698v3 loses to Ryzen 5 5600X 22 and 17%, by minimal and average FPS. Switching the graphics card to NVIDIA RDX 3080, the difference between the two CPUs is 20 and 15 percent. As you can see, the difference of the difference is just 2 percent. If you keep in mind that overall AMD RX 6800 XT is slightly faster than NVIDIA RDX 3080 at 1080p, you can neglect this difference and conclude that these two CPUs are performing basically the same with both of the graphics cards. As you can see, the gap between E5 and Ryzen 5 is basically the same if you use RX 6800 XT or RDX 3080. In some games, AMD plus AMD is a better combination, in other games, Nvidia plus Intel is a better combination. But overall, it's kind of the same. Still, if I would be able to test 40-50 games, then we could claim a conclusion that Intel Xeon is better with NVIDIA GPU than Intel Xeon plus AMD GPU. But I have tested just 18 games, and here I can say that the performance between Xeon E5 and Ryzen 5 is about the same. But how about ray tracing and DLSS? Let's take a look at a few games which support those technologies. Watch Dogs Legion. This is a rather modern title which supports NVIDIA RDX as well as NVIDIA DLSS. That's why I have tested three different configurations. RTX Off DLSS Off, RTX Ultra DLSS Quality, RTX Ultra and DLSS Off. Without RTX and DLSS, the gap between Xeon and Ryzen is 9 and 3% comparing 1% low and average FPS. Enabling RDX and DLSS increases the gap between the CPUs to 13 and 7 percent. As you can see, increasing the GPU load with RDX and DLSS does not help Xeon E5 catch up with Ryzen 5, instead it's starting to lose even more performance compared to Ryzen 5. Enabling Ultra RTX without DLSS increases the GPU load to the level that it doesn't really matter which of the two CPUs you use. The performance is basically identical. Shadow of the Tomb Raider doesn't support DLSS, you can only enable or disable RTX shadows. Thus, I have tested only two configurations, RTX off and RTX on. In both of the cases, difference between Xeon E5 and Ryzen 5 stays between 35 and 25 percent. One more example that increasing the GPU load with extra RTX work does not help Xeon E5 catch up with Ryzen 5. 
Call of Duty Modern Warfare also doesn't support DLSS, you can only enable and disable RTX. Without RTX, the difference between Xeon and Ryzen is 8 and 1%, comparing 1% low and average. Enabling RTX increases the difference between the CPUs to 16 and 11%. Yet again we see that adding extra load onto the GPU also increases the demand to the CPU. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War is a newer title which supports NVIDIA RDX as well as NVIDIA DLSS. Thus I have tested three configurations again. RDX Off, DLSS Off, RDX Ultra, DLSS Quality, RTX Ultra, DLSS Off. Without RTX and without DLSS, the difference between the CPUs is 13 and 15%, 1% lows and averages. Enabling RTX and DLSS increases the gap between the CPUs to 20 and 31%. One more example that NVIDIA RTX and DLSS provides extra CPU load and demands you to have a modern and powerful CPU to get the best result out of your NVIDIA RTX graphics card. If you enable RDX but disable DLSS, the difference between Xeon and Ryzen will be 15 and 25%. It is not as big of a gap as if you would enable RDX and DLSS, but the gap is still bigger than without DLSS and without RTX. And the last game that I have tested with RDX is Metro Exodus. Here, enabling or disabling RDX doesn't really make a difference. It's important to mention that the game supports NVIDIA DLSS, but it only works with resolutions greater than 1080p. For 1080p I'm only able to test RTX without DLSS. Here the difference between Xeon and Ryzen, as I said, doesn't really change enabling or disabling RTX. Even though the gap did not grow with RTX, it still demonstrates that extra load onto the GPU does not help Xeon E5 catch up with Ryzen 5. My final conclusion for this video will be the following. In general, it doesn't matter if you use AMD or NVIDIA GPU with your Xeon E5 or Ryzen 5. Ryzen 5 is still faster and it will be consistently faster with either of these GPUs. Yes, in certain instances AMD plus AMD is a better option, in other cases NVIDIA plus Intel is a better option. Overall, Xeon E5 performs slightly better compared to Ryzen 5 with NVIDIA GPU compared to AMD GPU, but the margin was minimal. NVIDIA Ray Tracing and DLSS is another interesting topic. Even though using these technologies you load your GPU much more, you still need a modern and powerful CPU. At 1080p, using ultimate RTX quality with or without DLSS, Xeon E5 is still losing to Ryzen 5. Even though it's RTX 3080 which is responsible for painting all those rays on the screen, you still need a powerful CPU which would provide all the work for the graphics card. Xeon E5 is unfortunately not able to do that, and in certain cases we can see the difference between these two CPUs go up to 40%. Even if you play at 1080p with ray tracing enabled with something like RDX 3080 or 3090, you still need a modern powerful gaming CPU. Xeon E5 will bottleneck your system, and no, modern games are not going to utilize those core mores. You need better cores to be able to provide you the best ray tracing and DLSS performance. Additionally, from myself I can say the following. There are many different theories online where people complain about AMD drivers and claim that NVIDIA are the most stable drivers ever while AMD is shit. In my personal experience using these two graphics cards, AMD RX 6800 XT and NVIDIA RDX 3080, I have got more problems with RDX 3080. In some cases MSI Afterburner would refuse to show overlay, in other cases games would crash, in some other cases the games would just refuse to launch and I would have to search online to figure out what to do about it. And it's important to mention that in both cases I had fresh Windows installations, so there were no additional drivers from the other manufacturer to mix into the game and to break up the system settings. Even though ray tracing or RDX performance is rather pathetic, I still find it looking quite good. For example, I have completed both of the Call of Duty campaigns with RDX on. Yes, the performance is pathetic and you shall never do that for online gaming, but for the campaign it was worth for me and I enjoyed the better visuals. 
Apart from that, I'm really happy to see that AMD is finally competing with Nvidia at the highest possible level of the GPU tiers, and now AMD RX 6800 XT is not only able to compete with RTX 3080, but also beat it in many instances. Of course, ray tracing performance is extremely pathetic with RX 6800 XT, and I did not even bother to test that, but let's hope that in the future, the next generations of AMD and Nvidia graphics cards will be able to provide some kind of a meaningful performance with RDX and DLSS or whatever AMD is going to decide to call the technology. Before I bought our X6800 XT to test Xeon and other CPUs, I made a little poll where I was asking my subscribers and other viewers which GPU they would like me to test CPUs with. Most of you said that AMD RX 6800 XT is the most interesting option. That is why I have invested quite some money to buy this AMD RX 6800 XT, but after that I have started to get multiple different comments, something like, why you never test with Nvidia, are you an AMD fanboy, how about ray tracing, how about DLSS, blah blah. So I was forced to buy an Nvidia graphics card, and this time is uh, Nvidia RDX 3080. Unfortunately, I was not able to get myself a Founders Edition card and I had to opt into whatever was available even though it was severely overpriced. So this is Gigabyte overclocked RDX 3080, which means that the results are slightly unfair, but in this video I was not comparing two graphics cards, I was rather doing different investigation, thus it doesn't really matter. Overall, I would like to hear from you what do you think right now. Shall I keep using AMD RX 6800 XT for my tests, or I shall switch to NVIDIA RDX 3080? For now though, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope you have found it interesting, bye bye!